table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Furrows we glad the earth is bare. One more seed is planted there. Give up your strength, the seed to nourish that in course the flower may flourish. People look east and sing today. Love the roses on the way. Stars keep the watch when night is dim. One more light the pole shall brim. Shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People look east and sing today. Love, the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts of mirth, Christ who brings new life to earth. Set every peak and valley humming with the word, the Lord is coming. People look east and sing today. Love the Lord is on the way. Well, good morning. Everybody look east. Everybody look east. Wait a minute. You all know which way east is. Thank you, David. Were you looking east? Yes, thank you. So, uh, welcome to worship this morning on this second Sunday of Advent. I am thankful for your presence and um, wherever you may be, whether it's uh, worshiping in person or uh, worshiping online. So, welcome. And thank you for all of you who are doing things and all kinds of things and those who helped me along the way. Uh, thank you, thank you. Remember uh, to pay attention to those opportunities that are in your bulletin. And there are scripture reading calendars and um, that also reverse food pantry items uh, on the back side of that and scripture on the front. They're on the Welcome Center, uh, an opportunity there. Also on the Welcome Center are a list of names for those that we are going to give a, just a uh, a welcome to, uh, uh, you're here and, and welcome, you're part of the community. And one name was left off of that, and I'm not sure how, but uh, please add Brittany Joyner to your list, all right? Brittany Joyner to your list. And there are many cards out there, and there are uh, the bags that you can put your cards into. Does everybody understand that now a little more clearly? So um, we just invite you to do that. Remember, caroling is coming up next week, next Sunday at 3 p.m., opportunity for us together and to be present with some people who just need a little song. And you know what? You don't even have to be able to sing very well. Uh, you can mouth the words or you can just sing out loud, and uh, it, it will be a good time as we go. Some of you are not smiling about going to sing. Uh, so I, I hope we will do that, and just remember Blue Christmas is on the 17th, a time of worship when we can remember um, our pain, our grief, our suffering, but also those, that pain and grief and suffering of others. And I, uh, I just invite you to be a part of that and invite others to, to do that. Just so we are clear about Christmas Eve, um, December 24th is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Everybody good with that? We will have worship at 10 a.m. July, I mean, December. Oh, gosh, how did I get to July? <laughs> it's a wonderful mind in here. Um, December 24th, 10 a.m., fourth Sunday of Advent. And then at 4.30 and 7 p.m., we will do um, Christmas Eve worship. Everybody good with that? And um, we will do, of course, candles at, at both worship. And 
we will uh, have live on the 7 p.m. service for those who uh, are worshiping at home. Everybody good with that? All right, I just, there was some uh, lack of clarification. So, and also if uh, some of you would like to join the choir through um, Epiphany Tuesday evening at 5.30, be here, be, be singing and smiling. And so that's an opportunity if you just want to do short term. And our special care person of the week is Anna Nellis. And a reminder that you do not have to know um, the person that is our special care person to just write them a note of encouragement. It's a difficult time, and uh, most of you do not know Anna, but she needs a word of encouragement and uh, to know that there is hope in the midst of, of it all. So, take a breath. And remember that we're not in this alone, but the one we're going to hear about today is the one who brings that peace, telling about the one who brings that peace. So welcome. In our Advent series, we are celebrating the gift of being truly present to each other and to the call of God to make this place, this world, a better place. We can be the gift of presence with those who experience life as less than peaceful. But this might also be true of how we are personally feeling in this moment. Our lives can be a bit chaotic or in need of a makeover. The good news is that God is continually making a way for do-overs. In this, we can find peace, even when life doesn't feel so peaceful. This week, we focus on what it means to be a gift of non-anxious presence for those who need it most. present on the second Sunday of Advent with great anticipation for the gift that God will reveal. We open our hearts as we open the gift. The promise of peace is the divine gift we receive. What do we do with it? The gift of Christ's peace reminds us that we can have serenity even in the midst of non-peaceful situations. Peace is not simply the absence of conflict. Peace is an ever-present gift that we can open at any time when we stop, 
breathe, and trust that we are never alone. And the gift of peace we will give is to be present for those who feel alone. We light this candle of peace as a sign that we can be present. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise one, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? I will give my heart. Let us pray together. Holy living light of God, you are our peaceful presence. Let this peace grow in our lives each day so we can be a present of peace to others. Unwrap and open our hearts. May it be so. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Up your heads, ye mighty gates, behold the King of glory waits. The King of kings is drawing near. The Savior of the world is here. Fling wide the portals of your heart. Make it a temple set apart. From earthly use for hands and glory. Thy going with prayer and love and joy. Redeemer, come with us abide. Our hearts to Thee we open wide. Let us Thy inner presence feel. Thy grace and love in us reveal. Thy Holy Spirit lead us on until our glorious gold is won. Eternal praise, eternal fame. Offered Savior to thy name. Can you take a deep breath? You all aren't very talkative this morning. Just breathe in and breathe out and just remember that it is the Spirit of God that brings that peace. Now turn around and look. Look east. And then look west, and north and south. And would you say, the peace of Christ be with you. And children, come on up. Welcome, friends. Can you say welcome to those folks back there and those folks up there on the screen? Yeah, all right. So it's the second Sunday of Advent, and were all of you here last week? Yeah, you know, some of you weren't, but we discovered that um, there are presents already here. Have you noticed them? What are two presents? All right, what's the first one? Last week's. Hope. What's this week's? 
All right. So we got hope and peace. But I, wait a minute. I think they spelled that wrong. It's P-E-A-S, not P-E-A-C-E. The gift's a gift of peace. No, 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 no. It's not the gift of peace. It's the gift of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And you and you and you. It's the gift of peace. Oh, I thought they misspelled it. That makes sense. Last week, Hope wanted everyone to get chocolate cake. She hoped we got chocolate cake so I guess it just kind of stuck with the food and that we are doing the advent reverse calendar so okay well the gift of peace a very wonderful thing I do like green and I do have little peas all over my wrapping paper so I guess that kind of fits uh you can't really see it but do you like my bow the kids made my bow you like my bow oh. no and nobody yeah Peace has a green bow to represent the growing we're all able to do when we live in peace with each other. We nurture one another with peace, and then we get to grow to be strong and tall and confident. Some children in this world don't have enough peace, and it's hard to grow strong and flourish. So I'm thinking that you could be my gift of peace in training to help me spread others. Can you be my gift of peace? Yes, yes, okay. yeah, yeah. Can you say yes? Yes. That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? I like to spread peace, do you? It's a lot better than spreading peace. But sometimes we are just too anxious, aren't we? Or uncertain, or we may be afraid. And um, we may say, well, I'm not sure I have peace inside to give. Oh, well, that's common. Everyone thinks they don't have peace inside. But you know what? You don't have to wait until everything in your life is perfect and peaceful all around you to actually find a little peace inside. You can breathe a breath prayer. Ready? Let's try. <gasps> Do you want to try it with me? Ready? Let's breathe a breath prayer. Just... <gasps> Breathe all the anxiety out and breathe God in. Oh. See, we can breathe a deep breath in, and then we're going to let the breath out with a sigh out loud slowly. And then God is there, because he was there from the very beginning. Even when we couldn't feel anything but that worry, God was already there. Wow, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, and it calms us down a little. I think we could all use more peace. So I'd like to suggest that when we are upset, we could do a breath prayer to bring more peace to us and to those around us. What do you think? So now that we've done a few of those and we have more peace, let's have some fun. And you know, I've been working on that poem, right? So we think we got it on the screen, maybe. So, all right, if you're boxed in, everybody, if you're boxed in, flip, flip your, your lid, lid and let, let the, the peace out that, that you're, you're holding, holding in. in. For it's a gift, gift for, for me, me and, and you. you. So, so flip, flip your, your lid, lid and share the gift that's you. Oh my, I love that idea. I love to flip my lid. I love flipping my lid. That is great. We have green bows in the manger, just like the green bow I'm wearing today. So that can be the gift of peace for others. It says, I like a piece of pie. No, no, no. I read that wrong. Wait, just kidding. It says, that's not what it says. Okay, here's what it says for real. Would you like some peace and quiet? I hope you get some peace of mind. Give, a pe give peace a chance. Let everyone live in peace. Aren't those great suggestions? So maybe we can read it this week. And uh, before, can you all go to your managers after we pray and get it? I mean, go to the 
basket in the manger, not your manger, it's just the manger. That's a manger right there. Something like that, yeah. All right, so let's do that and let's pray. Can we do that? Repeat. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of peace. We thank you for the gift of peace. Help us to be the gift of peace. Help us to be the gift of peace. For anyone who needs it. For anyone who needs it. Amen. Amen. Well, All thank right. you so much. It's sure good to know that I have help spreading peace around. Let's take our green bows and spread peace to all around us. Don't forget to pray your breath prayer for peace this week for yourself and for others. And be sure, come on, go get your green bow at the manger. All right, grab on. And now we're going to go back to Children's Church and learn about the innkeeper and how he brought peace to a family. Yeah, get behind me. Good morning. The prophet Isaiah lived in a time of exile perpetrated on the Hebrews by the Babylonians. By the time we get to chapter 40, one of our readings for today, Isaiah's disciples are writing after the exile has ended. In this part of the book, we hear themes of comfort and peace and the possibility that the paths of our lives can be cleared for new life. We also hear that we are always held in the peaceful presence of our God. Let us read these excerpts responsively. Console my people, give them comfort, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem's heart and tell that it is time of service is ended. A voice cries out, clear a path through the wilderness for Yahweh. Make a straight road through the desert for our God. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges become a valley. Go up on a high mountain, you who bring good news to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, you who bring good news to Jerusalem. Shout without fear and say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Like a shepherd, you feed your flock, gathering the lambs and holding them close, and leading mother ewes with gentleness. The new churches of the first century church were encouraged by the writer of the letters called First and Second Peter. These churches were living in a confusing time as they struggled with the belief that Jesus' return was imminent, but was not yet coming to fruition. In our reading today, the writer invites them to wait with peaceful hearts, even in the midst of what feels like chaos. Hear this excerpt from the second letter of Peter. This point must not be overlooked, dear friends. In the eyes of the Most High, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. God does not delay in keeping the promise, as some mean delay. Rather, God shows you generous, generous patience desiring that no one perish, but that all come to repentance. But what we await are new heavens and a new earth, 
where according to the promise, God's justice will reside. So, beloved, while waiting for this, make every effort to be found at peace and without stain or defilement in God's sight. Consider our God's patience as your opportunity for salvation. Advent from the Gospel according to Mark is the very beginning of the book, setting up the idea that this story of Jesus will be a transformative experience. Drawing on the prophet Isaiah, Mark tells his readers that God is making a way in the most difficult places, clearing open paths in the desert places. John the Baptist shows up in Advent, as he typically does, a sign that the time has come when the Messiah, born of the Spirit, will be present among us. You are invited to stand as you are comfortable for the reading of the gospel. 
Here begins the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it was written in Isaiah the prophet, I send my messenger before you to prepare your way, a herald's voice in the desert crying, make ready the way of our God, clear a straight path. And so John the baptizer appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to John and were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and he ate nothing but grasshoppers and wild honey. In the course of his presence, John said, one more powerful than I is to come after me. I am not fit to stoop and untie his sandal straps. I have baptized you in water, but the one who comes will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, have you ever been around something, a situation, a time, when everybody was so excited and getting ready to to go and take in what was there? The news had spread. Any of you ever been there? Wow, you are a hard crowd this morning. (laughs) Nobody's been excited because of news that has come that you want to be at an event and be partaking in it? I've had several of those. And one thing that I remember is, and I I was actually just graduated from high school, I think, um, and we were in Washington, D.C. for the National Conference of the Future Business Leaders of America. And we were competing in parliamentary procedure, but there were better things to do, too. And that was a lot of touring and seeing all the sights of Washington, D.C., but it was over July 4th. Now, do you know what happens in Washington, D.C. on the 4th of July? Well, I was so excited about it, and I had my camera going every place with my camera bag. And I lost everybody and had no clue where I was because I was so excited. But I guess I found my way back. (laughs) But this is what we've got with John today. John the Baptist, that is, as Mark's gospel because Mark is just wham, bam, okay, we got to do it, get it, get it. Short sentences, verbs, do, do, do. Have you noticed that about Mark? And Mark is that Uh, That first gospel that was written, and actually I'm sure all those others have taken from that and and used that as the guide and added more to it and and had a focus of um, what was going on there. So uh, we've got this stage set, and it's no birth narrative that is in the kind that we expect during Advent, as we head into Christmas, that of the beautiful birth on the holy night. It's the wilderness. And there's a dude that's out there in camel hair. And he's eating locusts or grasshoppers or whatever you want to call those creatures that jump. And wild honey. And my question after reading this uh, first off was, Um, does it help with his allergies, eating that wild honey? I don't know whether it did or not. But there was something going on, and people were on their way to make sure that they got a part of it. And there's probably exaggeration. Any of you ever exaggerate? Or you know that child who says, Oh, and it was so big it fit. It was bigger than the world. Any of you ever heard that, those kinds of things? Well, this was going on, and that's what we get of of those who are headed out to see what John is all about. John was certainly 
a forerunner. Let's pray. Oh Lord, help us to be such masters of ourselves that we might truly become the servants of all others. Take our minds and think through them, our lips and speak through them, and then, oh God, take our hearts. Take our hearts and set them on fire. Amen. So, um, sometimes forerunners aren't named. People don't um, talk about them very much or even know about them. And in fact, um, Sarah Evans, Private Sarah Evans, who is now 61 or 91 years old, uh, reflects on this seemingly remarkable event that has led to public um, recognition. This was three years ago, uh, but recognition 70 years later. In 1952, Private Evans was on her way home from her first military assignment, and when she refused to move to the back of the bus. Upon refusing, she was taken to jail, detained for 13 hours, and Evans sued the Interstate Commerce Commission for destruction, a discrimination. And despite this judicial victory, in November of 1955, the ruling was not enforced until 1961. And so, meanwhile, in March of 1955, there was um, a, a teenager, a black teenager, Claudette Cloven. She refused to give up her seat to a white person. And having been exposed to the actions of Sojourner Truth and Harriet Trub Trubman, Calvin said, I am going to resist injustice. And she explained that she, what she experienced on the city bus was her saying, I am making a stand for justice. And so she, um, because of doing it, she was handcuffed and arrested. And unlike Evans, her story was hidden until recent years. But you know who they, these, this, these events were before, correct? Rosa Parks. The civil rights icon that is um, attributed to that uh, Montgomery, uh, promoting that Montgomery uh, bus boycott in 1955. And there was Sarah Evans and Claudette Cloven these trailblazing young women that set in motion that, that would be attributed to Parks. The names are, are scarcely associated with civil rights at all, but they were part of the forerunners, the pioneers of civil rights, seeking justice for themselves and their race. And that's what John is he is a forerunner for Jesus and he is excited about what's going on here he's that forerunner and he says hey you know come on repent do all these things he was there preparing the way for Jesus and that's an important thing to do to prepare the way for Jesus. And you know, John, he didn't live too long. He got in trouble all the time. But what I just wonder is, what caused people to respond to him and go out into the wilderness And be baptized by John. What causes us to do things? What caused me to roam around the mall in Washington, D.C. as a, a new graduate of high school? You know what it was? 
what I could see through the camera and the excitement. And I still have those slides and pictures someplace. I can even probably tell you where some of those slides are. Because that was important to me. And for John the Baptist, somehow he was one who was prepared to bring this news that Jesus was the one who was coming after, after him. And the one who would be, the one who would forgive sins and bring newness and, and uh, bring peace to a world that was all messed up in a time when the Roman Empire was full of all kinds of injustice. And John got his head taken off by the things that he did. But you know what? Sometimes we have to prepare a way. The reality is that our human condition oftentimes is that we want to prepare our way. You know what I mean? Our way. Instead of preparing the way. The way of Jesus, God's way. Because we get caught up in so many things and all those people out there that say they've got something and we want to be a part of it. I was... Um, at a funeral yesterday, and, and he wanted to have a party on Friday night of a beloved friend, and he was a beloved, um, beloved father and husband and beloved member of, of the community. One who had been a person who helped bring others into reality and show them, he showed them a way. Um, he, he put people in um, positions as he was a manager and um, let them do what they were called to do and be successful at it. And he did it with his kids and he did it with others. He prepared the way for others and I know that he had ALS and a couple other things that are just those devastating um, diseases that really take somebody down and and so he knew his time was not long and he didn't know how things would end uh, for him or when. And that drove this manager of people crazy. He didn't know when he would die. And yet in that time of him preparing, he told a lot of stories and he felt the urgency that was different, although he had led a, a very fine Christian life and he had discipled people. But it became a more urgent thing for him to share this good news of Jesus and how important it is in our lives. And he did that. And I know that his children heard things in a different way these last few months and even yesterday. And I know his grandchildren did too. Because Bob became one who was no longer about preparing his way. Although he did like money and attention and a few other things. He was a great joke teller and a storyteller. But he was much more concerned about preparing the way. To Jesus and I am grateful for that because what happens when we prepare the way to Jesus is that we can be forgiven and we can turn from our ways to Christ's ways to a way of of hope and peace we can can a way of light light in a world of darkness and violence and ugliness and pain. And the, the other thing is that sometimes we need to go to the wilderness to figure that out. 
How many of you have done those backpacking trips in the wilderness without a vehicle, without a phone connection? Any of you done that stuff? Bless you, I'm proud of you. And I'm not sure I could handle that, but what I do know is I love the wilderness. Those places that are just there and they may be sandy and hot or, or they may be rough and tough. But those are places when we are, where we can get our grounding and remember who we are and remember who God is. And on this Sunday, this second Sunday of Advent, this, this Sunday of peace, my hope and prayer for us is that we will leave things behind that we need to. And we will turn toward Christ, toward that light, toward peace. And that in doing so, we may be a part of doing something about wrong and injustice and sin and hate in the world and in our lives. And one of the things that this John and Jesus are all about is the forgiveness of sins. And this is a great Sunday for us to say, you know what? I need to forgive somebody. It may be somebody living or someone who has died. It may be an organization, an institution, but maybe we are carrying something that we need to take to the wilderness and let go. Now, just a reminder about something of forgiveness. And I think I heard it recently, but that um, also recently, is that forgiveness is not about helping the other person, the one who has sinned against us. But forgiveness is for us for each one of us. Because you know what happens in that stuff we carry because we are so angry with someone who has done us wrong? Is that a heavy burden to carry? You know those people that we just want to... But we don't want to be violent. And it may be that we write a note to them and tell them. It may be that we do our own work and go to the wilderness and let it go. But that will bring us peace in a new way. And that will prepare the way for us to see the light and to know a hope and a peace that is new. And sometimes we do need to just breathe in and let go and know that Jesus is the one who has prepared a way for us to life and it comes in an odd way at an odd time and it shows up in Jerusalem that Christ child but indeed John the Baptist was part of preparing the way for the the adult Jesus. My hope and prayer is that you immerse yourself in the good news that is still coming and that somehow and some way you will be the warm up for Jesus because it's urgent. It's urgent that we give a wake up call to introduce Jesus and to introduce peace in a new way. It's urgent. Go for it. Right here and right 
it now. We open our senses to see and perceive the gifts we've been given to know and believe that what we must do is open our hearts to let all gifts flow through. Too often we find ourselves multitasking or obsessing about something that isn't quite right or that is unsettled or of a particular way that we like things, we get all caught up. We're accustomed to being preoccupied. And we often have little peace. So in this season of Advent, we give ourselves a respite from the pace and we are invited to slow down. And so in this prayer time, we'll take on a more peaceful rhythm we will begin with our prayers with three questions, each followed by a short silence, focusing intentionally on the thoughts and memories can be a kind of prayer, bringing ourselves into conversation with the holy. So I invite you to take a deep breath and close your eyes, if you are comfortable doing that. So the first question is, who was a gift of presence to you this week? Did you encounter their attention in a way that felt like a special connection? Just recall this in your mind's eye, seeing it emerge like opening a gift. If you cannot recall it's okay. This week, maybe we can notice those moments more deeply. And the second question, how did you offer yourself as a gift of presence? What did it feel like to extend your attentiveness and availability beyond yourself? Did you notice how it made a difference to someone else for you truly being present? And the third question, is it possible that God's presence is felt more acutely in these moments when we tend to one another? What could you do this coming week that would allow God's gift of peace to flow through you to someone else? It may be as simple as finding opportunities to speak an encouraging word. Or it may be as complex as actually lifting up someone's circumstances through volunteering or donating. our senses to see and perceive the gifts we've been given to know and believe that what we must do is open our hearts to let all gifts flow through
So during this time, we train our attention to those who are in distress. And we pray this week, invite you to name them, concerns of community and world. Just lift up those who are in war-torn areas. And those who are in areas where wind has hit and tornadoes and have also left devastation. Pray for those who are hungry and lonely and uncertain and cold. And we pray for all of those who come through the the door of the food pantry and the clothing closet. We pray for those 100 children who are signed up to get a gift and those who will be signed up tomorrow. For those who are in need of a home, We do pray for all of those who need your healing touch and their situations. And now, let us focus our attention on thanksgiving and joy. So this week we give thanks for... For children and special days of Grinch and Polar Express. For music and those who offer a helping hand. For those who are faithful in prayer. For those who have paved a way for us and been those pioneers. So we ask you, Jesus Christ, the greatest gift of all, to help us savor our journey and celebrate. As we look toward Christmas, Help us to recognize and create moments of sweet presence rather than filling the voids with the things that do not last. Help us to stop and notice what we are experiencing and accept it with open hearts and open minds. And in doing this, we allow you to meet us right here, right now, right where we are. Right here and right now, we open our senses to see and perceive the gifts we've been given to know and believe. must do is open 
our hearts to let all gifts flow through and let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen well now i would uh, like for us to invite uh, our um, new members who will be new members in a moment Anne and uh, Teresa come on up and as they're coming uh, there will be a part for you to respond to and also um, we will have the opportunity to uh, during our offering just explain that now is there plates here if you want to come and bring your food along the way you can do that or also there will be offering plates but come on up Right. You can. So. Well, it's been a pleasure doing a, a new member class. And so as uh, we a ask questions and learn about each other and learn more. So, um, Teresa and Ann, thanks for being a part of that. And so, um, I ask you some questions. On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce your, the spiritual forces of wickedness? Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Okay. And so you, will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these members now before you in your care? With God's help, you proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the ways that lead to life. That's the cool part of community, you know that? And we can pray for others too. So as members of the Christ Church Universal, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all you're in power to strengthen its ministries? And uh, will you, by your prayers, presence, gifts, and service, be a part of sharing the good news? All right. And congregation, will you do the same? All right. So, members of the household of God, I commend Anne and Teresa to your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And you can turn around and listen. Members of Christ's Holy Church, we bid you welcome to this congregation, the United Methodist Church. We renew our vows to uphold it our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Help with so order our lives after the example of Christ, surrounded by the steadfast love that you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in a way that leads to life eternal. the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. And so, Teresa Latham and Anne now, uh, no, sorry, and no. So would you say welcome to them?
All right, and let's uh, continue to give and worship as we bring our food and as we bring our gifts. So, all right, it is to you. Right here and right now, we open our senses to see and perceive the gifts we've been given to know and believe. we must do is open our hearts to let all gifts flow through God we just say thank you for your gift of life and Jesus and for all the gifts that are here uh, in all kinds of different ways. So take, use them, and bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. We close our service with a Christmas carol. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow knew the chaos and sorrow of life, sinking into a depression after his wife died and his son was badly injured in the Civil War. When Longfellow heard the bells on Christmas Day, he was encouraged that peace could come again one day to a troubled nation. And we carry that same hope for peace this day. I heard the bells on Christmas Day Their old familiar carols play And wild and sweet the words repeat Of peace on earth, goodwill to all I thought how as the day had come The belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to all. And in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace 
peace on earth, good will to all. Then peal the bells once loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fall, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to all. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolve from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, good will to all. Take a breath as we strip away the cluttered surfaces of our lives and become more present in the moment. May we be disturbed by what we can see now in the open vista, especially the, the suffering of those who are the least of these. We are no longer numb to the cries of those who are hurting. We ache for the violence of humans who do to one another and to the earth. We see all people and all creation held in God's love and life. Our comfortable lives are disrupted as we ask new, hard questions. But being more mindfully present will also bring greater awareness to God's presence, peace, and clarity in our midst. That is adapted from Amy Oden, and I hope and pray that is our dream and becomes more and more of our purpose. So go now and be truly present so that the gift of presence for others that is expected, that gift is you. It's the best gift we can give. And so before we go, uh, just a reminder that there are 100 uh, children's gifts that have been uh, spoken for already. There are still... Um, still cards, envelopes on the tree if we want to do anything in that way uh, because there will be perhaps more tomorrow as tomorrow is the last day. So, somehow, in the name of the Holy Presence, thanks be to God for that, the divine gift and the spirit of peace that is waiting for us to unwrap and have abundant life, let us go in peace. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.